The sound echoes through the hills, both familiar and comforting. A steam engine chuffing its way through the North Carolina mountains. A relic from another time, given new life at one of our state's premier theme park attractions, Tweetsie Railroad. Tweetsie is one of those rare places you can go in the 21st century to see the real thing. A working steam engine and its train carrying passengers. Two steam engines actually, the original 1917 Tweetsie and her Johnny-come-lately trackmate, the 1943 Yukon Queen. Both Baldwin locomotives designed for narrow gauge tracks in mountainous terrain. The original Tweetsie No. 12 ran on the East Tennessee and Western North Carolina Railroad from Johnson City to Boone. Locals called it Tweetsie because of the distinctive whistle that resounded cheerfully through the hollows and hills of the Blue Ridge. Tweetsie has a long history when it was an operating railroad. It goes back to the 1880s in this area. Number 12 locomotive was built in 1917, but the East Tennessee and Western North Carolina had 13 steam locomotives, number one through 14. There was no number 13. And number 12 was the only one that survived the scrap heap. Number 12 made its last run on the ET and WNC in 1949. As the old puffer bellies were being phased out in favor of modern diesel electric locomotives, the 32-year-old engine seemed destined for the scrapper's torch, like other steam engines on the ET and WNC, but eventually was purchased by two visionary North Carolina entrepreneurs, Grover Robbins Jr. and Frank Coffey, who moved the engine and its cars to boom. Grover was an entrepreneur. He had all sorts of you know, what seemed at the time wacky ideas that he actually was able to carry out, and one of them was Tweetsie Railroad. And people in the Boone Blower area missed having the train come into Boone every day. You know, sees going in there night after 1940. And I think he just thought that it'd be neat to have a steam locomotive operating in the mountains again and that people could ride on and go through a scenic trip through the Blue Ridge Mountains. So he acquired some land on the road to Blowing Rock and set about building his dream. Tweetsie Railroad opened to the public on July 4th, 1957. But it wasn't long before they recognized the need for a second steam engine. And this time, Robbins had to look a lot farther from home. In 1959-60, steam locomotives were getting pretty rare. They were all either scrapped or museum. But they found several operating steam locomotives in Alaska as part of the White Pass and Yukon Railroad. Originally, it was a freight line for gold ore, but during World War II, the Army took over the line to haul military supplies from the Yukon to the port at Skagway, Alaska. These locomotives had to run full out, much of the time in harsh weather. Although number 12 did not go north, two of her sister engines, numbers 10 and 14, did, but were destroyed in a fire. The engine that would in time live on as the Yukon Queen at Tweetsie Railroad was number 190, which had been ordered new by the military and shipped from Baldwin's factory in Philadelphia for service in the Yukon. 190 escaped the scrapper's torch when the war was over and newfangled diesels took the place of the loyal but outmoded steam engines. Grover cut a deal to buy a steam locomotive from the White Pass in Yukon and brought it here uh, in 1960. It was a laborious journey for 190, first by barge from Alaska to Seattle, and then overland atop a railroad car to North Carolina. But the engine didn't have to do any of the work this time, just sit back and enjoy the ride. By truck, finally, up the mountain from Hickory, where she would join number 12 at Tweetsie. After some slight modifications to make it a little more similar to the 12 in terms of silhouette, it was put in service at that time. We've run both locomotives ever since. On average year, we get anywhere from 200 to 250,000 visitors at the park, and that's usually in the space of about 130 days, so a lot has to go on in a brief period of time. What summertime visitors don't see is all the work that happens around the place in the winter. While the park is closed, 
tons of work goes on behind the scenes. The off season is a busy time for this state of the art repair shop. This winter, Yukon Queen is getting repairs to its boiler. It has two inner shells. It has an inner shell and an outer shell. The water's in between it, and that's how it makes steam. The heat is on the inside of the inner, inner shell, the firebox is. And these stay bolts hold the two sheets together. And occasionally we'll have one broken. The way we replace them, you take a torch and you cut it out back in there, and you get pieces out mostly. It's a threaded bolt. Looks similar to this. This is a new one. Nothing about repairing a steam engine is easy. This job means squeezing yourself into the boiler as many times as it takes. Okay, you watch and make sure I don't catch on fire. Right. While in the shop, 190 is also having her front wheels turned on this massive antique lathe. A template is used to reshape each wheel so it fits more snugly on the track. We turn them as soon as they need it. We don't over wear them. This is the second time we've done these in the last 12 years. Three. Another annual maintenance job is inspection, refurbishment, or replacement if necessary. That'll work for now. Of each rail car's two sets of wheels, called trucks in railroad talk. In this shop, each person may have something particular they're good at, but all get to pitch in on just about everything at Tweetsie from time to time. The guys in here, they have a lot of skills all together. It's just not one skill. We have carpenters in the shop. We have plumbers in the shop. We do all the maintenance on the rides, the chairlift, Ferris wheel. A lot of people want to be a train engineer, but it's a very hard job, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, the engine's wheels are ready to be reinstalled, which requires a fair chunk of heavy lifting. A section of track underneath the engine has been removed to get access to the wheels. Now it's put back so the engine can roll out when repairs are complete. The only way to get parts for old steam engines is to make them yourself. We make just about every piece of the train here in this shop. And they make parts for other steam engines all over the world. We're actually the sole source for Crown locomotive train parts. Antique parts made on antique machines. That's the way it's done, working on this railroad. And then it's time to fire them up and roll them out for a new season. The same crew that maintains the engines during the winter becomes the train's operators as Tweetsie comes alive again for visitors. Grover Robbins may not have called his dream a theme park, but he did have an entertaining concept in mind. The Old West, complete with a shoot 'em up surprise for passengers. When he thought about this, it was probably about 1955, and I don't even think the name theme park even existed then. Westerns being so popular back in the 50s on TV, it's just seemed to be a natural thing to do. Some people might be reliving a childhood visit to Tweetsie. Others may feel a nostalgia for the Old West, or maybe have a love of old steam trains. Whatever it is, people just keep coming back to Tweetsie. We're preserving steam history here at Tweetsie Railroad every day for people to see and experience. You know, we're creating history here at the same time. The park's been here for 52 years now, so we have, we have a longer operating history here as Tweetsie Railroad, the theme park, than the railroad had as an operating railroad. And the power of those haunting whistles. is still there. <laughs>